Hi everybody, my name is Barry Schwartz and this is the Search Buzz VD Recap. Today is Friday, November 18th and this is the search news we covered over at the Search and Roundtable at seroundtable.com over the past week. First up, lots of chatter around a potential update on November 10th, last Thursday, a week ago Thursday, um, where many SEOs and webmasters are saying, hey, my rankings dive, they increased, they did this, and so forth. Um, we actually have charts showing the changes, we have Moz and different uh, different websites actually confirming it. Um, here you can see uh, Pete Myers from Moz confirming that there was crazy temperatures on the November 10th. There's lots of different chatter as you can see through this talking about it and so forth. In fact, let me quickly jump at where Google actually said to me in a hangout, John Mueller said he's not aware of anything. Um, so let's jump to that chatter. You can see over here um, that even though I didn't ask, Gary, being funny, said, yeah, the most likely was an update. We're constantly doing updates, um, but not sure. And then you can see here Glenn Gabe showing a chart of a drop on November 10th or so and an increase on November 10th for different people that he's been tracking. So you can see there's lots of different things going on um, around this Google update. Um, Google has not confirmed anything. I definitely would love people to send me information. I could forward it on to Google. So this way maybe Google would say there was a bug or there was something that would launch that shouldn't have launched. If you want to share your sites with Google, I could definitely forward that on if you were hit. Uh, so definitely send me a message on Facebook Live or um, Twitter or whatever, and then you could, uh, I could forward it on. Or you could just email me by going to rustybrick.com slash Barry. Um, moving on. Gotta notice the stream is slow, so sorry for those watching live. I'm not sure why it's slow. Um, Google snippets. So around the same time, probably a day or two later, and people thought it was related, the Google snippets um, showed the wrong day for some sites, but only if you had a YouTube video. So for example, here's Jennifer's Jen, Jennifer's blog, SEM post, and you can see uh, the date said December 30th, 2013. The issue is that blog post was on January 11, 2016, about two years later, or a year later. Um, that being said, the reason it showed that date was because she embedded a YouTube video that was that was with that date, and Google was using a YouTube video for some reason for the snippet date. Google did fix that issue on, I guess, yesterday at some point. It was an issue for about, about a week, uh, about five days or so, and Google definitely fixed it, so that's a good thing. I think it was unrelated to the November 10th update. Uh, but some people are saying the snippet bug impacted their traffic. Um, it might have been just because the date was wrong and people thought it was old content. Um, but whatever. Anyway, uh, Google's Miley Oye, uh, uh, the developer program lead, she's very well known in our SEO community, uh, gave a speech at State of Search. And she basically quoted the Google CEO, Sundar Pichai, I can't pronounce his last name, um, Pichai or whatever, basically saying we're moving from a mobile first world to an AI first world. We want to build a personal Google for every user. And, and basically, um, Temple Eric Mark from Temple Stone Consulting quoted that. And everybody's talking about a mobile first world. Everybody's like, yeah, we got to build our websites for mobile first, mobile first, mobile first, which we've been discussing forever. Maybe you should start thinking about, thinking about an AI first with Google Home or a Google Assistant and so forth, and trying to think about the future of Google, which is AI first. I don't know how you optimize for AI, but um, should be interesting. Now, talking about AI, Gary from Google said a few weeks ago when I interviewed him at the Marketing Lang blog that Google could use machine learning and AI to take one, two, three, four different signals that they currently have, combine those signals into one using machine learning to make a new signal by itself. And that's how Google said they could use machine learning to use to look at old signals or existing signals, combine different signals, different ratios of the signals to make a new signal out of it, which is pretty cool. Um, and I have the transcript there and the audio of Gary saying that to us on the podcast. Um, so we're talking about AMP. We're talking about mobile first, how Google's mobile first index, um, which we talked about last week, uh, if you missed it, you catch up there. I'm not going to get into the mobile first index now. But how, how will AMP and desktop and so forth impact that? So it was my understanding that um, if you have a desktop site and you have an AMP version of your website, but you do not have a mobile version for some reason, which is, I think, unlikely, um, your 
AMP version will be the one that's indexed in the Google First mobile index, mobile first index. But Google's telling us that's not the case, that Google's going to say if you have desktop and you have AMP, but you don't have a mobile version, again, it's confusing because AMP is a mobile version, but AMP is not in this case a mobile version, that Google will pick the desktop version for their mobile first index, not the AMP version. Obviously, you have a, if you have a mobile site, whatever, they'll pick the mobile site. Um, but specifically for this case, desktop and AMP and no mobile, they'll pick desktop. You could go ahead and force Google to pick the AMP version by using a rel alternate tag and so forth and say, Google, this is my mobile site. Uh, but by default, it will not use that. It'll use your desktop version. I believe the reason for that is, well, one is you're not going to find, I don't think you'll find, an, a site that has a desktop version and an AMP version that doesn't have a mobile version. That would probably be very, very rare. And two, I su suspect most people who have AMP pages, you can't really navigate for the most part from there's no like site navigation in the AMP version. It's just the article. There's no like navigation to go to different categories or whatever on your website. And because of that, that's probably the issue. And if you are going to go ahead and make the default your AMP version for the mobile first index, make sure your AMP page has all the primary content and links and so forth. That's something that Gary said on Twitter. So definitely take a look at that and uh, make sure you do it that way. Talking about AMP and articles and so forth, Google has revamped their structured data documentation for the articles site, articles um, structured data. And specifically because there was a lot of confusion around AMP and non-AMP and what you do for structured data with AMP or without AMP, and Google has completely revamped it. Um, the main differences um, are between showing AMP and non-AMP pages, and also property used now to describe AMP versus non-AMP pages as well. So here's the old article. Is the old um, documentation on article markup. You can see it here, and you can see it's drastically changed to what it is now. So definitely, um, if you do this, which you probably do, take a look at this and make sure um, that you go, I don't know why the internet, the internet connection is slow. It's not slow, I have super fast internet. Anyway, apologize to those watching live. Um, the recorded version will be up soon. Um, going into a, a final thing with AMP, I believe, is that um, Google has released a new Google Search Console feature for Search Analytics Report, where you can actually now filter between, you can filter between, let me just zoom into there. Um, as you can see here, uh, and then the search appearance, you'll actually be able to break out filters between AMP articles and non-AMP, non-rich snippet AMP articles. So, as you know, Google moved um, AMP, in, AMP into the core mobile results, and because of that, previously, um, the Search Console Search Analytics tool only showed um, that filter for top sites in the top, sto uh, top story section. Uh, and because of that, um, you weren't able to say, how much traffic are my AMP articles getting across all of Google mobile? Because it only show the top stories. Now you can actually filter out the between the two, which is a nice filter. So definitely take a look at that. Google updated their How Search Works page to say they are aware of not 30 trillion pages, but 130 trillion pages. So back in March 2013, the page said 30 trillion pages. And now it says 130 trillion pages. That's a big jump, 100 trillion pages in about four years or so. Google's recipe markup has been updated as well. It specifically says you should use AMP HTML for recipe markup. It's another thing Bradley, uh, Aaron Bradley spotted um, or in the documentation around recipe markup. And it says you should pretty much use AMP HTML for that going forward. Again, AMP, AMP, AMP. Google's local guidelines have changed uh, around rich cards markup as well. Aaron Bradley posted as well. He tracks the structured data stuff very, very closely. So if you are using um, any local restaurant stuff, they have a new local restaurant list beta version uh, for rich cards. You can take a look at that. Uh, there's some documentation there as well. Ja, Gary from Google said you can use different forms of markup, so JSON versus, uh, for example, um, off the top of my head, um, microdata and so forth. Um, you can use different formats, RDFA, microdata, JSON, LD, on the same page, assuming that it's consistent across what you're actually showing. So you can definitely use different markups. I wouldn't recommend it, it's probably confusing, but you can if you want to. Google Maps um, and Local actually let you um, do something new with reviews. You can actually upload 
photos and videos. You can actually upload photos and videos when you leave a review now. You click on that, it will actually say, do you want to upload it manually? Do you want to take it from your from your album? Do you want to take it from your phone? And it will let you upload that. With that, they actually release new guidelines around photos and reviews. So definitely take a look at that. Google Search is testing a new interface. Zoom in again. So here is the new interface. Um, they moved the, they got rid of the gears icon over here and they put a settings link and a tools link over there as opposed to having just a gears icon and a settings button over there. So Google's constantly testing, but that seemed like a more extreme test. Uh, Google Knowledge Panel added some features for TV related stuff. So if you zoom in here again, you can take a look. You'll see for like you do a search for Westworld, which is a popular HBO show. They have these new buttons, like and dislike. Um, like and dislike buttons over there for you to play with, which is cool. Uh, almost done. So Google AdWords officially launched their swipeable carousel um, price extension. So if you are using price extensions, the new look for that will look like this. We can actually swipe, and we covered this a few while, a while ago, uh, but now it's actually officially live. So it's cool, you can actually swipe between these and it will show you different prices. Um, Google AdSense, Publishers are complaining that they, in their reports, they're seeing people spoof or hack data in their impressions report. So you can see over here, uh, Box Office Mojo is sending a tremendous amount of impressions to their <coughs> to their ads, and this is not anything to do with Box Office Mojo. Um, people are complaining about it. They're saying it might inflate their numbers and reduce and re overall hurt their re revenues per impression, which is a issue for them. Google has not responded to that, as far as I know. Bing Ads has expanded their Bing Ads partner program. So it's expanded, so if you are across the world, you can actually hopefully be accepted into that. And finally, the funny one for the day, Matt Cutts, as you know, he was the lead of search quality at Google. He's now longer, he's a, he's a leave with Google, so he's not really at Google these days. But that doesn't mean you, you want, you, you don't, <coughs> that doesn't mean you want to send Mike, Matt Cutts an email saying, I want to buy links, or I want to sell links to you, because that's what people still do. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, he basically said, "Can you?" He, he tweeted this. He said, "Can you point me to an example of some previous work that you've done?" This is me. He said after someone emails me to play sponsored content for fifty dollars on my website, and then he puts this gif there saying, <coughs> "The guy responded below our links to sites that were examples across multiple niches." And he obviously hysterically laughs about that because obviously he could just forward that onto his his team that he's aware of at Google Search and penalize the whole entire network of those sites. So one tip, a piece of advice, don't send Matt Cutts emails if you want to go ahead and buy links from his website. And that is then. Thanks so much for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. Again, my name is Barry Schwartz. This is the search news we covered over at the Search and Roundtable at SERoundtable.com. Again, today is Friday, November 18th. Everyone have a great weekend. Happy Thanksgiving for next week, and I'll see you guys next. Bye.